All right, guys, we're coming to you with an emergency live breaking update. Yes, I was just sitting down with my milk and cookies for the evening and had to throw on some clothes. And here I am because we're talking about a major case that just dropped in the Northern District Court of Texas regarding the ATF ghost frame receiver rule. What we're talking about here is something called a preliminary injunction. And here's why this is going to be so important. But I'm going to give you the bottom line first. The bottom line first is that the ATF just got crushed in court, crushed. We're talking about Vanderstock v. Garland, Northern District Court of Texas, ATF frame receiver rule. For those of you who may have forgotten ATF frame receiver rule, we're talking about the ATF's new letter that dropped in August of 2022. That feels like so long ago now after the whole pistol brace fiasco, but August of 2022, which basically said, look, under certain circumstances, that so-called 80% receiver or even less yeah, by the way, that's a firearm. And by the way, that could be a felony under certain circumstances. Therefore, undoing decades of ATF interpretation or rather non-interpretation of what constitutes a receiver frame and all that kind of good stuff. That is, of course, until August of 2022. A number of groups sued in the Northern District Court of Texas and elsewhere in Vanderstock v. Garland. And importantly, here today, March 3rd, 2023, I had to make sure I had the date right. We have a preliminary injunction that has been granted against the ATF. What does that mean? That means that this does not go into effect. That's what that means. Here's why this is so important. That's point number one, obviously huge. Point number two, when and why and how do federal courts grant preliminary injunctions? Because that's super important. There's a four-way test on this. I'm going to read this to make sure that everything is verbatim correct. Number one, a substantial likelihood of success on the merits exists. Man, that's pretty sweet. In other words, in plain English, yeah, the ETF's probably going to lose. Substantial chance of losing. That's what that means, number one. Number two, a substantial threat of irreparable harm to the plaintiff. In other words, the good guys here who are suing, there's a chance of irreparable harm against them if the rule goes into effect without a preliminary injunction or if it's allowed to continue to be in effect. Number three, that the balance of hardships weighs in favor of the plaintiff or this party seeking for the injunction, as well as number four, that the issuance of a preliminary injunction will not disservice the public interest. So before granting a preliminary injunction, a judge has to go through that four-way test. And again, really the most important thing, and if you check out my interview that I did, by the way, free plug for it here, check in the description box below. I sat down for a very lengthy and super interesting interview and with one of the lead attorneys who's suing the ATF, also, by the way, Northern District Court of Texas, on the pistol brace rule. And check out my interview there because he basically says flat out, look, generally speaking, there's exceptions on everything, but generally speaking, so goes the preliminary injunction, so goes the case. Which doesn't mean that if you win the preliminary injunction, you're going to win the case, nor does that mean that, of course, if you lose the preliminary injunction, you're going to automatically lose the case. But generally speaking, that's a real good bellwether of where that's going. Okay, a couple important things to tie this off because I don't want to make this a long one. We're going to have to keep in mind the fact that what's likely to happen here is that the ATF, the DOJ, they're going to appeal this decision and to the Circuit Court of Appeals down there. Okay, so it'd be the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals based out of Louisiana. Why is this going to be relevant? A couple different things. Number one, the ATF is going to seek to basically get rid of the preliminary injunction and up to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals and likely all the way up, whoever wins, whoever loses, the losers are going to wind up taking up to the SCOTUS, to the Supreme Court of the United States. Why is this going to be so important? Well, number one, because of course, what's going to happen is there's going to be an interpretation of the law based on what's going on here, going up to the Circuit Court of Appeals and then SCOTUS. That's going to get passed all the way back down to the district court. And then eventually the district court's basically going to have that interpretation of the law. They're going to plug it into the facts and kind of the lawsuit is going to figure itself out. So this is a major first step on that road. Number two, though, is that in the case Cargill v. Garland, link also in the description box below, which came out of the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, basically shooting down the ATF's bump stock ban as being a broad overreach, unconstitutional, you name it. They went in the rule of lenity. It's a fantastic case that came out dozens and dozens and dozens of pages. Again, there's a quick recitation of it linked in the description box below down there, where I actually predicted what's going to be coming up in this case is going to wind up 
maybe applying to pistol braces and elsewhere. And here we are, ghost frame receiver rule. And oh, what do you know? Pistol brace filed in the same circuit court. Wow. It's like I ate my Wheaties when I made that video. Just kidding. I don't eat Wheaties. Nothing against Wheaties. Just not what I do. So there you go. That's kind of the roadmap ahead. That's how all these pieces are going to wind up probably fitting together as this all comes into focus. We're going to have all these different cases. What might wind up happening, we've got the ATF frame receiver rule. We've got the pistol brace rule. All going to the same court that dealt with the bump stock ban. All funneling up through there to hopefully put as much jurisprudence, as much legal weight on our side before it winds up going to the US Supreme Court. We'll see how this goes. Again, check out my video as well if you're curious to see how a lot of this is gonna wind up going down in the details in the trenches. No, this was not a you know, uh, this was not a New York Rifle State Pistol Association v. Brun case. This was decided on the statutory merits. We're going back to the Vanderstock v. Garland. We're talking about the ghost frame receiver rule. If you want to see me get into the details of how the judge went into this, because this is not a New York Rifle State v. Bruin, you know, national tradition, all that kind of stuff. If you want to see the details of that, let me know in the description box below. Please take a moment if you've not already done so, click like, comment, subscribe, share the video around, show your support not only for this channel, also for the Second Amendment, as well as the fact that I unfortunately, sorry, sweetie, if you're watching, missed the opportunity to put the kids down tonight. Five young toddlers. I feel like talking to YouTube and you all down the lens may have gotten the better side of this sometimes. Hope you are all having a great day wherever you are, and we will see you in the next one. Thank you.